Hi everybody, it's Claire and today we are going to be working with these absolutely stunning watercolour metallic paints. You can see uh, just by looking at them in the, in the tray how gorgeous they are and I've been thoroughly enjoying working with them. They're made by an incredibly talented artisan called um, Karen and her uh, Etsy shop is etsy.com. It's KJ Design by Karen. So if you wanted to have a look at these um, to treat yourself to a couple on Etsy, by all means, go and have a look. Just be very careful when you put it in the search engine. So you need to um, put it exactly as you see it on here. So capital K, capital J, capital D for design, capital B for buy, capital K for Karen, okay? And all one word. Otherwise the search engine doesn't tend to work. But like I say, I think by the time you've finished looking at these and we've been through um, the tips and techniques and tricks on how to use them, I think you'll definitely be treating yourself to one or two because they're just gorgeous. So let me put this out the way. Um, I should say that you can buy them individually. You can buy as many as you want. There's no minimum or maximum order. You can buy one, two, six, ten, twenty. There's a maximum of 90 colours, um, but don't feel like you have to buy a certain amount because you can. Karen will make you up any size order that you want. And um, they are pretty comp competitively priced in the market. Caleros are roughly about four euros 50 each. These are 4.99 GBP. So top end of the market, but very, very well worth it. And um, as I say, they're artisan and each and every single individual one is handmade. So let me show you what I've been doing with them. So I released uh, this page from Joanna Basford's Secret Garden. It's the artist edition of Secret Garden. I released this last weekend and I know that ever since I've released it that Karen has spent every waking minute making the paints and you can see why. Just look. I mean I purposely picked this hummingbird page from Joanna's Beautiful Designs because it's just perfect to show these paints off in their full glory. Okay, so we're going to be having a look at, um, like I say, specifically how to blend these paints. So how, if I just put this in the light, so can you see the blue going through to the green here? So I'm going to show you how to blend them and um, basic tips and tricks on how to use them as well for just block colouring. Okay. So what I have is, clearly I have my trusty egg cup full of water, I have the paints, I have um, my black Prismacolor pencil, which is PC935, I have um, a very, very small watercolour brush. It doesn't have to be any particular brand, it just has to be a very tiny tip. This one is a 4-0. I have a slightly bigger brush, which is a 2-0. And I have my trusty black fine liner in a 0.1 uh, nib. It doesn't have to be any. This is a, a Pigma Micron. I usually use um, Stedler black fine liners. You just have to have a fine liner with a, you know, like a relatively thin tip. OK, and that's because no matter how steady your hands are, you will paint over the lines. Um, so sometimes you just need to kind of neaten them, up, neaten them up a little bit. OK, let's get started. So let me move this out of the way and I'll just put it up here because we can use it for reference. So underneath you can see that I've, I've got a map. So can you see all of that? Yes, I think you can. But what I'll do is I'll take you through it because we're not going to be doing the whole page clearly. Um, I'm going to be concentrating on the bird wings and the bird, uh, the bird breast. But I, I know that some of you have said, well, what else did you use on this page? Because I'd really like to create it. So I've, I've written a map for you. So you'll be able to pause your screen and zoom in and have a look at all of those at your leisure. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this book from underneath. So that's where it's from. It's from uh, Joanna Basford's Secret Garden Artist Edition. I used the Artist Edition because, let me just put this out of the way. It's lovely thick cardstock and whilst um, the first tutorial I showed you on using these we did use them brilliantly well without warping in our normal colouring books I just thought because I wanted the majority of this to be um, the paints I just thought that the artist edition version was much better because uh, it, it takes watercolours a, um, a little bit better so when you're using more paints I tend to find that the cardstock versions suit suit your purposes better 
But if you've only got the Secret Garden book, clearly, um, the, the first tutorial I did, if you're careful with them, I don't think you should have a major problem with the pages warping. Okay. So, before we begin, I'm just going to quickly take you through this map. So let me pull it down a little bit. Give this for reference, actually. We'll put this underneath. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to move the kit to one side and the paints just for a moment and put these side by side so that you can see them. Okay. Let's get them lined up. Pull that down slightly. Right. Okay. So, um, let me point with my brush. I'll just take you through what I've done. So, uh, the, the little piece of um, bird face here and here is uh, regal blue. Okay. Then these, uh, these shaped flowers here are bronze green through to dark green. Uh, sorry, no, beg your pardon, beg your pardon, back up, back up, back up. I'm going to click the wrong one. So these are um, black green through to uh, bronze green paint. Okay. Then these ones are just solid colours. They're bronze green and the outside is Prismacolor in dark green, which is 908. Then we have the two large leaves at the top. So this one sitting slightly behind is flash copper. The one in front is bronze. Okay, then we've got, let me go back to the hummingbird. So this portion here is Prismacolors and it's from uh, bottom to top, it's blended peacock blue, which is 1027, parrot green, which is 1006, and it's true green, which is 910. Okay, then I've got the, the outer ring of the hummingbird wing, which is burlesque. Then I've got the inside, which is lilac gold. Okay. If I just turn that into the light, just slightly for what I'm gonna show you next. The beak is, let me just check what written down. Yes, so the beak is Aztec blended through to yellow. Okay. These beautiful, beautiful wings are uh, lake blue, uh, sorry, not French lavender, through to lake blue. These beautiful feathers under here, if I just put that into the light and move them up slightly, and you can see the gorgeous kind of blue and pink. So this is gemstone and Zambian amethyst. Okay, and just while I've got it here, the, the, the bird breast again, is the same colour as these leaves up here. It is black green and bronze green, okay? And I've put a little bit of a, a shadow. One of the good things about these paints is that you can um, you can colour over the top of them. So I've just put, this is why I've got my black Prismacolor paint out because I've just put a tiny bit of black just as the, the breast disappears under the wing, just for a bit of shadow. So I'll show you how to do that at the end. What else, what else, what else, what else? The, um, the leaves here that you see are uh, Prussian green, they're Prismacolors, so Prussian green which is 109, blended through apple green 912 and Chartreuse which is 909. And then the smaller leaves are one of my favourite combos, they're grass green which is 909 and spring green which is 913. So I think that leaves us with the big leaf at the bottom. So this one here. And if I push this up a little bit, you can see that dark to light, these are paints, it's dark brown, flash copper and Aztec. Okay. And then I think the only other thing that I need to tell you about are these uh, beautiful pink and yellow flowers. So these are Prismacolors. Um, it's processed red, which is 994, pink, which is 929, salmon, which is 1001. Lemon yellow 915, and then the um, this little ring is grass green and spring green. Okay, and then what I've got is as well the very inner 
if I just move these up again to show you, you can see that the inside of each petal has paint and that's a light pink and that is bubblegum. OK, so basically that's your map. So I'll put this to one side again and grab the paints back. OK. And like I say, you'll be able to. Um, this is why I've written them on the paper, because you'll be able to, uh, to to write them down as you go through. Right. OK, 10 minutes in, let's start using the paints. Now, I've made a point of not doing anything with these. If you well, you, you have seen me work with Caleros before, all of this time I'd have been talking, the paints would have been soaking, I'd have pre-wet them and they'd be nicely thickened up and ready to go. Not so with these. They are so beautifully thick and rich and the quality is just so superb. I can put water on these from dry and they will be absolutely perfectly um, thick and easy to apply, ready to apply and you won't have any problems. I, I found that I only need one coat. OK, sometimes in Caleros you need a couple of coats, but these ones you'll probably only need. If you get the water content right, you'll probably only need one coat. So we're going to be having a look at these hummingbird wings. OK, so we're going to be working down here. So I'm going to zoom you in. Bear with me. OK. I'm going to be working on these wings here, which is pretty much in shot, I think. So I'll put the paints there. OK. So actually, can you see the paints that I'm going to use? I might pull it down a little bit for you, because then you can see exactly what I'm doing with the paint as well. Because I want to show you what I'm actually doing on the pans, if you know what I mean. Right, so we are going to start. So remember, we're going to be looking at these these tail feathers here. OK, so these beautiful blended tail feathers. So we're going to start with the French lavender, which is clearly the purple colour that you can see. OK, so I'm going to start with this tail feather here. So I've got my my bigger of the two zero. I've got my bigger of the brushes, which is my two zero. The reason I've got a smaller brush out, I should say, as I'm going along. Can you see these smaller feathers here? So you will do exactly the same in terms of blending the two colours together. But just for those smaller spaces, use your smaller brush because it'll um it'll save you being um you know working in a tiny space with a bigger brush. So I've got some clean water. I'm just going to wet my brush. This is the French lavender here. Clean that off a little bit. Sorry about freckle in the background. You can't trust him not to bark for about 10 minutes in a row. Now, can you see? Can you see from dry? I'm only putting a tiny bit of water on the tip. Can you see how thick they are? instantly. Really good and it's a sign of quality. So these go straight on the paper. So I'm going to take the purple to about halfway up this tail feather. Okay and we're going to block colour the bottom half of it in. And we're going to jump between colours while the purple is still wet. So we're not going to do all of them in purple and then go back because the best way to blend metallic watercolours is to have them wet when you blend the two colours together. Okay? So far, so easy. So that beautiful French lavender colour. Okay? I'm going to clean my brush. I've got a cloth just off shot. I'm going to go to the gorgeous lake blue colour, which is this one here. I'm getting to know your paints by name Karen without even looking at the, at the stickers now. Okay, again, that was literally from dry. 
you can see how beautiful and thick they are on the brush instantly. So I'm going to start from the top. I'm going to start from the top like this with that beautiful blue lip colour. And I'm going to take it down to where the purple is, the French lavender. Okay. Now then. So I've got a tiny gap, tiny, tiny gap in the middle. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is clean my brush all together. Okay. Just wipe the excess water and the excess paint off. I'm just going to dip it in, in my water very, very slightly. And then as with watercolours, you would normally drag the um, the light into the dark. So that's what we're going to do to blend these colours. I've just got a tiny bit of clean water on the end of my brush and I'm going to drag the green, well, the blue lake, the lake blue, because it's slightly lighter in colour, into the French lavender. And remember, these paints are still wet, so they are going to blend beautifully. Can you see that? Look how perfect that is. If I just lift these paints up and off one second and lift this up towards the camera. Now those are still wet, you can see they're still wet. But can you see how beautifully those have blended together, those two colours? She says, trying to move it about. My brain's not working the right way. There we go. Okay, so they're really, really simple to blend because they're so smooth and rich. So we'll repeat that process. Put the paints back. Great, you can still see that. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do something very specific. So I'm gonna clean my brush again and I'm gonna go back to the French lavender, but I'm not going to go to the next tail feather down because the one that we've just done is still wet and it will be wet for about two minutes. So if I was to start painting on this one, if the edge of this next one is still wet, you'll end it with a puddle. OK, so what I did was when I did my original one, I painted alternate tail feathers, waited for those to dry and then went back and did the other ones in between, which is a really good tip because otherwise you could you could well end up with a puddle of, of just mixed paints that don't look nice at all. OK, so we're going to work on this one. So again, I'm going to, I've got my French lavender on my brush. I'm going to take it to roughly about halfway up the tail feather. And just block paint it in. It's so therapeutic. It really is so therapeutic. Sometimes, I mean, I do, you, you've seen my tutorials. I, I do mostly, um, colouring with Prismacolors. I'm a colourist rather than an artist, if you know what I mean. Far from being an artist. But sometimes just painting is just so relaxing. There we go. Okay. So I've just gone over that line slightly, a tiny, tiny bit there. And like I say, you can't help it. But once that's dry, all you need to do is go over it with your black fine liner, but make sure it's properly dry first. Clean the brush. Clean the brush. Then we are going to go back into the lake blue. And we'll start from the bottom of the tail feather. like that and again I'm going to take it up to the purple but I'm going to leave a gap okay clean the brush clean water drag the lighter colour into the darker colour so we're dragging the blue into the purple And if you feel like you've dragged the green a little bit further down, too far, just go back to your purple 
French lavender and just dot on over the lake blue. Okay. So like I say, it's I personally think they're easier to blend than Caleros because you only need one you only need one uh coverage and they're just so rich, they just they just meld together. They're absolutely glorious. And like I say, they are top end of the market, there's no getting away from it. But in terms of their competitors, they are very competitive, very, very competitive. In fact, you know what I'm like with my Caleros. I will go so far as to say I like these a little bit better than my Caleros. So again, you can see that top one starting to, to dry a bit now. There we go. So I think what we'll do is we will have a look at um, the breast. So we'll have a look at that. So what I need for this is my uh, black green, which is this one here. And I need my, I'll just pull this down slightly, grab my pencil, I need this one here. Yes, bronze green. So I need this one and this one. Okay. So I'm going to start with the, uh, the black green. Again, this is from dry. And they thicken the moment you put the water on. Ready for you instantly. Just pull that down slightly. And you can see the greens. So this one, this is black green here. So if you look at this, we are now working on this colour here, to the top of the breast, towards the face. Now I painted over these um, individual feathers, it's entirely up to you, but this page for me was, whilst it is about the design clearly because the hummingbirds are perfect for, the, for these paints, it was more about me getting used to the paints rather than being completely 100% sticking to the design and I think if you try to paint these little individual feathers these breast feathers I think you probably struggle which is why I decided to cover them over so again just roughly taking it this black green halfway down the rest okay then we are going to go to our bronze green which is this one here I'm going to start from the other end and I'm still using my 2-0 brush because this is a fairly big area to cover so I don't need a huge amount of detail in this bit. So I'm going to colour up to black green, but leave a gap. And I've just got slightly too much water on that. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you what I'm going to do. Can you see the bronze green? I'm going to just grab my brush and I'm going to pull some of the outside paint in to the little pool in the middle because I just had a tiny bit too much water. I'm just going to pull some paint into the middle and that it's not grainy in the slightest it's very very smooth and what that will do is it will just if you put a tiny too much drop of water in it will just thicken it up for you nicely again. Okay. That's better. Now what we're going to do is, same principle, we're going to pull the light <clears throat> into the dark. Clean my brush. Tiny drop of clean water. 
and we're going to pull that bronze green into the black green. And they just melt, uh, melt into each other beautifully. It's as easy as that. It's as easy as that. So again, I've just gone over the, the line a little bit there. We don't have to worry about that at all. We've got our trusty black fine liner. Okay. So if I just move the water out of the way because I'm clumsy. And I lift this up towards the camera. You can see again that it's still wet. Let me just try and catch the light with it. Come on, you know you want to. There we go. So you can see it's still wet, but you can see it's beautifully blended. So I'm going to go back to the tail feathers because they're dry now. Back to the tail feathers. Fine liner. And I'm just going to make sure the tip's clean. And I'm just going to carefully re-outline that for a perfect line. And I went over it slightly down here as well. So I'm just going to angle this and just go over that like that and as I say I haven't been very accurate with that one but you get the idea as I say I would do this one next and then go back and do this one and this one and this one so alternates okay so i think the outside of that is dry enough for me to just cover that up while i've got my fine liner in my hand and like i say if you follow the map that is the basic principle for every single piece of blended paints on this piece and i have to thank karen so much because these paints are an absolute pleasure to work with. And I'm not just saying that, I'm being absolutely sincere. And I know a lot of you have ordered them since you saw the finished piece from last week. So we'll just put that to one side. I know a lot of you have ordered some of these since I put this up um, on social media last week. Um, I'll just zoom you out again, actually, so you can see this. So hopefully, now that you've got them, that will show you how to use them. They're really, really easy. I, I promise, really, really easy. Uh, the easiest watercolour paints that I've used by far. And you can see the gorgeous effect. And you saw that, um, if you're using these in your colouring books, you saw that I put very, very little water on these paints to be able to use them. So you should be absolutely fine. OK. As usual, any questions, give me a ring. No, you can't give me a ring, can you? But you can <laughs> drop me an iMessage or you can contact me on YouTube. And I hope you give it a go. I know some of you have bought um, the colours of these in advance, certainly the French lavender and the lake blue. So I really do hope you give it a go. And I can't wait to see what you do with these. Bye for now, girls.